Hello Planet Watchers, good to see you once again. So I'm really on a very, very busy schedule in particular for traveling. So the first thing I will uh, want to do is to apologize as I, I didn't have the time to review all the questions and to answer questions today. Uh, we can answer compelling questions in the coming days via Twitter or elsewhere. But today I didn't get a chance to, to, to prepare properly for that. Apologies about that, but once again, there are good reasons for this. Lots of things going on. So in particular, as some of you know, last week I attended um, Consensus 2022 in, uh, in Austin, Texas, an event organized by Coindesk. So it's probably one of the most important blockchain events of the year. Uh, for a reminder, Planet Watch via me were invited to participate in a panel about environmental well-being. It was a very, very interesting panel very, very good panelists, uh, people working on water quality, people working on solar energy, very relevant, very interesting panel and lots of uh, potential leads coming out of it. So these meetings are very interesting for people who meet during the meeting and outside the meeting. It was also a good way to reconnect with long-term supporters such as uh, borderless capital folks. So it's really, it was really worth the trip. Came back on Monday, very, I'm still very jet lagged, but it, I think it was a very relevant use of uh, Planet Watch time and resources. So that was quite good. And I believe there could be a number of very promising follow-ups, but as usual, there's no point in the, yeah, talking about things which will need time to materialize. Okay, so that was a good event. Next. I'm also quite happy to comment a little bit on uh, some uh, initiatives in the UK. So we announced yesterday, I believe on our social media, uh, a couple of projects uh, in the UK, in the United Kingdom, and we made the announcement on UK's Clean Air Day. So we are working with the uh, South Norfolk, a local government authority in the, in the east of England, on the deployment of uh, several sensors on a project of monitoring the issues regarding air quality in that region. We are also initiating a project with a, with a company in the same region, Saxon Air, to monitor air quality at Norwich International Airport. So again, these are so far small projects, but it's very important for the company, for our project to build use cases of real world collaboration with local government, with companies, where, where, where these entities want to get Planet Watch data because they feel that they are very relevant to protecting public health. Uh, incidentally, nearly 40,000 people die each year in the UK due to, to air pollution. So we're very pleased to work with local government and companies uh, and help them understand how they can tackle with this issue. So these are the kind of collaborations which are not uh, huge, but are very relevant to our mission and which build value and uh, credibility for our project. Next, getting into some day-to-day uh, -day matters, I would say, we are, uh, so Helium Deploy, our partner, is, uh, is expediting, started expedite for us uh, uh, waiting list sense of sales. Uh, vouchers are going live on our voucher marketplace, probably as I speak. So they should be li live tonight at the latest. Uh, please note that there, there will be, it's, it's been, one voucher has been released for discounts on per, sense of purchases in euros, another one, a different one for purchases in USD. Please make sure you can, if you want to claim a voucher, if you can claim a voucher, make sure you claim the correct type based on your, on your region. Okay, so again, uh, it took a bit of time to start uh, sales and, uh, you know, things are never as smooth as you would like them to be, but this is, this is starting, this is taking off, and I believe we'll be able to fulfill waiting list possibly a bit faster than expected from now on. Okay, uh, another, another thing where we are delivering what we promised with a little bit of delay, to be honest, oops, sorry, is the second, second phase of the Stake for the Planet initiative. So we just secured 1,000 additional new trees to plant uh, these trees are cool because uh, you'll be able to see on the marketplace that there are some new types of trees, in particular for some new countries, I believe Guatemala, Ghana and Cameroon. And in terms of species, uh, 
mangrove and white mangrove, I understand. So it's interesting to be exposed to have the possibility to plant these this trees. And uh, the other uh, innovation that we introduced in the program, as you know, is the commitment to burn 100 planets per each tree getting planted. So instead of burning trees, which is awful, we plant tree and burn planets. Now, this burning for uh, blockchain experts has to be explained. I should explain how it will happen. So we set up a wallet, which we call Burner Fund. And obviously all details will be released in a blog post. So there is a burn Burner Fund where we place planets which will be burned. Uh, this will be moved to what I would call a pre-burner account, to different account. So what happens when you redeem a tree code, two blockchain transactions are triggered. One is the one which freezes the tree NFT to the wallet, which is the same thing that happened before. A second transaction sends 100 planets from the burner fund to our pre-burner account, as I call them. Now, why do I call it pre-burner account? Because in order to do things correctly, we are still discussing the best solution together with all the algo community and developers to do to ensure permanent burning, which means that tokens have to be permanently uh, removed from the from the token supply of the company. So you will see that this with this pre-burner account filling up, tokens will never leave it until we decide what is the end game, what is the end point where tokens end up in order to be permanently burnt. But again, uh, I'm not going to get into additional technicalities here. There will be a blog post explaining the, this better. A little update on type 2 sensor. Yeah, I keep saying that we are a bit late on schedule, but uh, I mean, things are never easy, uh, especially at these times. There are, I mean, markets are in a turmoil. There are lots of things going on, lots of challenges. So it's difficult for any company, particularly for a startup, to go straight on schedule. But we are following up on our plan. We are delivering. Uh, the delays related to the group, to the fact that we decided first to test a sample of 100 units of the new sensor in a, in a restricted test group. This test group should be able to wrap up their work by early July. And of course, as soon as they have wrapped up and confirmed that the system works as planned, we will open up sales on a large scale. And again, starting from the waiting list, obviously. Okay, now, um, today is going to be a bit short, but I want to I want, I'd like now to emphasize something which is extremely important to, to bear for you guys, for Planet Watchers to bear in mind. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you once again for supporting this project and believing in the project. At the same time, I do understand perfectly concerns about the evolution of the token price. All markets are in a turmoil and smaller, newer tokens are even shakier, of course, the larger assets. You should really, when you think about Planet Watch, bear in mind the end game. The end game is extracting value from the data, and this reflects on the reward system. And maybe it's something that some people may not be fully aware or forget. So let me remind you how the reward, the Planet Watch reward system works, because it is a two-step system. So first, every day, you get token rewards for just sending the data streams based on the rates. In the, in the white paper. So since it's a kind of a fixed amount of planets, clearly, if you think about the fiat value of these rewards, this fluctuates with planet price. If the price goes down, the dollar value of the daily rewards goes down. It's, a, it's just obvious, unfortunately. However, the second reward step takes place, will take place, when data are monetized. Because again, if you, if you read the white paper, you get additional rewards when data are sold. A fraction of the rewards goes to all sensors in the, in the same type being rewarded. And another fraction of the sensor goes to the actual owners of the specific sensors whose data are being sold. So it's a two-step system. And what's really important to bear in mind is that when data gets sold, data pricing will be based on fiat rates. So since it's a, it's a 
it's a market value, uh, just making numbers up, it could be that we price um, 1 million API calls at $1 million. I'm, I'm saying random numbers here, but it's pricing dollars. It's not pricing planets because there will be companies budgeting for this data, paying for the data via planets, but having a dollar budget in their, in their accounts. So that's a kind of a fiat budget. So once, you, once we do significant data sales for some fiat value, people will get a fraction of that fiat value in fiat, in planets, but that will be linked to a fiat amount. So let's make a concrete example. Let's say we make $1 million worth of data sales and you, because you own many sensors maybe, as a sensor owner are entitled to 0.1% of that amount. So that's 0.1% of $1 million. So you will get $100 worth of planet tokens, regardless of the token price, which means that if the token price is high, you get a small number of tokens. If the token price is down, you get more tokens, but you get the fiat equivalent of $100. So there is a big difference between the two steps of the reward system. The first step, the daily step, the kind of upfront payment, the fiat value fluctuates as the planet's token price fluctuates. The second element of it, the, the data related payment, the fiat value will, be, will not be sensitive to token price fluctuations. So just as a reminder, and this what this tells you is that the end game in terms of value creation and value distribution is really data sales. That's why we are investing so much effort into releasing APIs which enable uh, seamless data sales. And that's why this is really the, the focus of the project that you should all bear in mind, because that's where the real value is unleashed once we once sales take off. And all these little POCs that we are disclosing are building a path to large scale sales. And once again, there is a lot going on in the background, but it is not wise to disclose what's going on in the background unless there is some solid agreement that can be announced. Okay, so sorry, that was short. I hope it was sweet enough. Again, markets are difficult, but not just markets. The overall financial and economic context is very difficult. We are keeping to our path, to our roadmap, so we believe we can uh, deliver and achieve our goals. Uh, incidentally, we want to, I, I've been talking about decentralization a number of times, and uh, we'll release more information along the way. Uh, we will start by decentralizing communication gradually. So uh, starting from the next AMA, I'm working to make sure that there are more faces in this AMA, not just my old face, but other faces of people who will uh, comment and talk about key issues uh, in the Planet Watch ecosystem. So we will gradually open up AMAs to, to the community itself. So working to improve the level of our communication, including the IMA, and working most of all to deliver on our plan and to build a, a green data which are relevant and valuable. Uh, we'll keep uh, we'll keep you informed of very important development, which could be any time there is something to, to comment upon. We'll uh, we'll try to deliver information as fast as possible. So thank you again for your support. We are all in this together. As I mentioned in Austin, we are really a network of sensors and people, and people are more important than sensors. It's easier to replace sensors than people, and that's that's the way we we see it. So keep it up, keep watching the planet, and see you soon. Thank you.